And as you have already started to as you, you have already started to work with shields, um, when you enter, whenever you enter, what is your uh, first objective? Gain the center. Gain the center. And you enter with a shield in. Uh, enter, gain the center. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> you can tattoo it. <laughs> you can write it on the inside of your shield. Yeah, because this good. is what this is what you do with the shield first. So you position it in space so that uh, uh, um, so that you gain the center. When you gain the center and when you manipulate the other uh, shield, this also means that you open up the other shield and then. The, the sword can just uh, effortlessly uh, do the job. And this is what uh, these swords were made for. You just throw them forward and let them do the job. So you don't need to put in a lot of power. We did this demonstration earlier where I tried to, uh, to hit this spear shaft of you really hard, remember? And when I did it very relaxed, it was much more power. It's the same with the sword here. Yeah? So if you just let it fly like so, you just the sword does the job, and then the leg drops off. Uh, drops off. It's like in this this one uh, saga text where uh, two Vikings are fighting, and then one cuts uh, the other one just above the knee, and he looks down and he says, like, "You don't have to look; it's off. <laughs> <laughs> it's severed. <laughs> just cut off your leg. Okay, you don't have to look." <laughs> Which also means it must go so fast that uh, mm -hmm. first take a look before <laughs> falling over. Anyway, so um, <coughs> so yeah, and and uh, because you actually throw the weapon, you, um, that's why the hilt is designed this way, right? Because um, when you have a straight or almost straight pommel bar here, it provides um, a safety lock, so the sword cannot fly out of your hand. This kind of uh, full blow. It's much more difficult with a medieval sword. So if you do it, uh, if you do the same thing with a with a medieval sword, you see, I don't have a lock for my pinky here, so the danger that the sword actually flies out of my hand uh, is much higher with uh, that kind of pommel. Of course, it's not like they uh, were uh, less clever than the Vikings. It probably just chose that uh, this particular kind of cast blow, what I call it, Gewaffner Heap, was not so important with this kind of sword. With this kind of sword, um, you, the pommel is designed the way it is because here you do a lot of uh, actions that you don't do with a Viking sword, where the pommel is really important uh, in a different way. And all actions with the sword are much smaller and more um, more limited. Right? But the Viking sword, and also it has a totally different uh, mechanical properties. If you, cook, uh, if you look at the uh, pivot points, if you move the sword here, it, the central pivot point is down here. So when I um, manipulate this part of the, pom uh, of the handle, the sword wants to turn around this axis. Or in other words, if I'm standing like this and I want the point to go forward in a straight line, the best way to turn the sword is to turn it around this, this pivot point. And I start by pressing on exactly that spot here. So this is where I'm pulling and I allow the sword to turn around this point. And you see the point flies forward in a straight line. And that's a block. Okay, so this is a really mean uh, blow, but that's a different one that works differently than the... Uh, because uh, from here I do all these winding motions that we did with a spear that you, don't do with a that you don't do with a Viking sword. With a Viking sword you work differently. With a Viking sword you do all the winding and the struggle for dominance in uh, single combat, you do that with a shield. So the sword is just there to finish the job. Right? This is also why it doesn't have a, a long cross guard because the, um, there hardly is much um, much blade contact. If you have, um, if you have a, uh, a medieval sword, uh, Daniele, um, can you pick up uh, 
Christian, schwer ist okay, Christian? So when you uh, <coughs> when you are fighting differently and the shield is not imp uh, as important as in Germanic or Viking combat and you're fighting with bucklers or um, or with kite shield like this one for instance then this the, the sword has to do uh, because I don't have so much reach you see there's a big difference in reach. Uh, compared to compared to uh, the Viking shield, so it is so it is the blade that as that I uh, as I enter that claims the center. It's no longer the shield, but that means that the blade has to do, do a different job. If you uh, um, do the same, so you come okay. entering the uh, your centro. So so see now uh, I get into positions where I need a cross guard. See I've collected the sword here. I can now thrust, if he gives me a uh, uh, few pressure on it. No, no, this. These are uh, different actions um, that are not so, sim uh, not so dissimilar to what you were doing with the spear. Right? But you see that uh, these weapons work differently than the Viking sword. And this is... Um, the design of the sword tells you how the sword is supposed to be used. So it's not arbitrary, it's not willkürlich. It's not by accident that these swords have cross guards and a totally different kind of uh, uh, pommel as opposed to the Viking sword. Ja, also ist nichts an dem Design der Schwerter ist zufällig. Das ist alles äh, optimal auf die jeweilige, auf den jeweiligen Einsatz abgestimmt. It's all optimized design. And so if design changes in history, that means that uh, the combat context has changed. This is also a good clue when we are reconstructing uh, historical martial arts because um, we can look at the originals, that helps a lot.